Finally, a major lender acknowledges the underlying problem in our property market. So today, I'm going to go through exactly what they have to say, then I'm going to show you the data to show you where the problems are the biggest around our country, why the government's solution isn't going to make a major dent at all in this problem, and ultimately, what it all means for you as a property investor. Hi, it's Nero here, and now it's CBA's turn to come out and say, sorry, we were wrong about our predictions on the property market. However, at least they're admitting they're wrong and they're actually sharing some data behind their new property price predictions. Let's begin by looking at what they have to say. CBA has upgraded its house price forecasts due to the unprecedented surge in immigration and ongoing supply shortages. In May, we forecast national home prices to rise 3% in 2023 and a further 5% in 2024. The pace of gains since then have exceeded our expectations. The lack of new listings on the market, tight rental markets, and strong population growth have pushed up prices more than expected. As a result, our May forecast has already been met this year. Gains in calendar year 2023 to August sit at 4.7%. Now that's nationwide, so that means that some areas haven't really risen that much, but other areas have far exceeded that. Given the current momentum in the market, we revised up our estimate for home prices gains in 2023 to 7% last week. And as you can see in this chart, CBA is predicting that property prices in 2024 will hit new peaks, wiping out the losses from 2022. Then when we look at this chart, CBA says that in 2023, Sydney property prices will finish the year off 10% higher than when they first started. This is also in line with what Westpac had to say. Melbourne might only be 3% higher, Brisbane 7%, Adelaide 6%, Perth 8%, and then Australia on average 7%. And this is just looking at our major capital cities. CBA then expects property price growth to slow in 2024, as you can see here, but still property prices to keep rising. And then they actually acknowledge why property prices are rising. Much of the driver of home prices from here will be driven by the level of supply. As we noted above, new listings and total advertised stock remain below average levels. And then if we look at this chart here, where we look at the blue line, which looks at dwelling stock, yes, there has been an increase in listings, right? We've seen that splashed across the mainstream media. And the blue line is showing that yes, listings have increased, but look at the red line, which is population growth. That's what's driving the demand, right? Demand is far exceeding supply. So even though supply might be increasing slightly, it's not enough to offset the demand. But then the question is, where are these supply shortages the biggest? Because if you can identify those pockets, then the odds are, as long as some of the other factors stack up, those are the areas where you'll get the most amount of capital growth. Well, first of all, let's have a look at these charts from Matusik, which shows here that our past population growth annually was on average 345,000. But you can see in 2022, we jumped above that. And in 2023, we're clearly well above that. And then if we go to this second chart, which looks at projected annual population growth, you can see we're above our long-term average in 2024, 2025, but all the way until roughly 2028. So for another five years, we'll be experiencing growth at above our long-term averages. So that means that to keep up with that, we will need to increase construction to be above our long-term averages. And as you can see in this next chart here, which looks at annual dwelling completions, we hit a record 220,000 completions in 2017, which is this blue line here. And then we've been dropping lower and lower and lower. So we're currently sitting at just above our 20 year average. So we're building less homes at a time when more and more people are coming into the country. That's clearly gonna place upwards pressure on property prices. And if we look at this next table, which looks at the new dwelling supply status, where is the undersupply the biggest issues? If we look at New South Wales, we have 47,500 new dwelling completions in 2023, but we need 75,500. So that means we're undersupplied in New South Wales by 28,000 or 37%. In Victoria, we're on track to build 59,000 homes by the end of this year, but we need 84,250. That gives us an undersupply of 25,250 or 30%. But look at Queensland, they're only building 33,000 homes there, but they need over 60,000. So 
That's a difference of 27,250 or 45%. That's nearly one in two. The only state that has a slightly bigger undersupply issue is Western Australia, where in 2023 were undersupplied by 53%. And yes, as you can see here in this chart, Northern Territory has a bigger difference percentage wise at 69%, but the numbers are much lower. But still, it's an undersupply, right? Nationally, this year, we didn't build enough homes to the tune of over 100,000 or undersupplied by 36%. That means that for every three households looking for somewhere to live, only two are successful. But then what about the federal government's initiative to build 1.2 million homes over the next five years? Won't that help fix the crisis? Well, unfortunately, it's not gonna make much of a dent at all, and here's why. Firstly, some simple maths. If you wanna build 1.2 million homes in five years, that's an average of 240,000 homes per year. Well, remember this chart I showed you earlier on, which shows that we've only ever built 220,000 homes or more once back in 2017, and we're actually now building less homes than we did back then. So therefore, the odds of us turning that around so quickly are next to none. We've got too many builders going broke, too many other issues, and so the government is quite likely to fail in its target to build 1.2 million homes, which means that the undersupply issues that we have nationwide are going to be well entrenched for many years to come, not everywhere, but in multiple areas around Australia. But then what about the fixed rate mortgage cliff, right? I mean, we know that so many people out there are struggling right now, their repayments have increased substantially. Isn't that going to hold back property price growth? Won't it even potentially crash the market? Well, let's come back and look at what CBA had to say about the fixed rate mortgage cliff in their annual shareholder announcement. So CBA's annual shareholder report is over 155 pages long. So buried there were some charts that talked about credit quality, credit arrears, and let's have a look at what they have to say. So as you can see here, the portfolio credit quality, the chart here is looking at consumer arrears for 90 days or more. Now, the blue line is personal loans, and you can see that as of June 2023, that's on a slight rise. Credit cards, the yellow line, is actually lower than they were back in 2021. But what's most important for us are home loans. And what you can see here, the green line, shows that consumer arrears at 90 days or above is sitting at a really low 0.47%, which is lower than it was in June 2022, and even lower than it was in June 2021 when we had more of a normal market. And in fact, hardship applications are down 27% from their pre-COVID average. So that clearly shows you that even though people are struggling under the weight of higher interest rates, it hasn't been enough for people to default. People are still doing whatever they can to hold on to their mortgage. And when you look at the actual supply issues, the fact that demand is so much higher than supply, CBA is definitely correct when they say that property prices are set to keep rising, but personally, I believe that in 2024, property prices will rise a whole lot more than what CBA think. They've been wrong almost every single time when they've made their property price predictions. So yes, property prices are set to rise, but I think they're gonna rise a lot more in the right areas in 2024. And if you want help to try and find out where those areas are, check out the link in the description below to get totally for free the digital version and audio version of my book. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.